I have been playing Marvel's Midnight Suns over the past month, and I gotta say, I'm really enjoying it. Now, role-playing games are my types of games. I love making my own character, I love dialogue options, I love being able to mold the world around me. Strategy card-based games has never been my type of thing. I didn't think it would be my type of thing, but when I got it, started playing it, started really enjoying it. Having a mixture of Midnight Suns characters, X-Men, Avengers, even characters who don't belong in any of these groups all come together to form one team. To bring down sorcerers and demons and all types of evil magic is such a really cool idea and you get a lot of great moments between all types of characters that you would have never thought would intertwine with one another even in comic books now i'm still not done the game maybe halfway through the story mode but of course you know I had to do this. Wouldn't this be really neat if there was this type of game or maybe this type of story within DC? What would DC's Midnight Suns look like? Which characters from the Justice League would join this team? Which characters from other teams or even outside of teams of DC join this fight against evil magic. Probably the closest thing DC would have to a Midnight Suns is Justice League Dark, but even then it's still very different and at least the premise of the game is very different than just simply Justice League Dark. Now really quickly starting off with the main character Hunter. I think that could simply just stay the same and make them connected to other characters along the way that you find out they have a history with. 300 years ago and also they have a connection with the main villain. The first character we're going to be starting with here is Ghost Rider in which I personally believe the DC counterpart for their Midnight Suns in this situation would be Etrigan. I think they're similar enough, both very powerful, both have this demonic spell thrust upon them, both kind of have a scarier nature. Not only is it the nature of their abilities or who they are as characters that made this decision, I do personally think Etrigan Etrigan would need to be part of this team. For Magic, who by the way is one of my favorite characters in the game, but I would go with Raven. Now there is someone else in this list who you could consider swapping out for Raven, but the biggest reason why I went with this direction, both of them have this kind of loner, keep to themselves type of personality. They don't warm up to people all that quickly. They have a good side and a dark side, a connection to good magic and bad magic. Also the fact that Raven can open Open up portals in a way that magic can do it which will allow the team to go on missions but realistically in DC almost any mage can open up portals so I mean it could be anyone for Iron Man I of course went with Batman if you're gonna have one of the main if not the main Avenger in this team, I think you're going to have to have one of the main Justice League. Batman is going to offer you everything that Iron Man has offered you within this game. He'll be your tech guy introducing new technology into the Abbey or wherever you are located. And just for the sake of it, I do believe the Abbey in this game would actually be Shadowcrest, which is Zatanna's castle basically and it is used for the three r's rest relaxation and research so it would be the perfect base for these characters in a magical base setting now i'm actually going to go with a quite underground character in dc that not many people know of but for nico i'm going to replace her with black alice black alice or Lori zechlin which her real name is she's a teenager with immense magical abilities and what she's capable of doing is stripping the abilities from other people magic based and making it her own she's also so powerful that at one point she was even considered to be a world level threat i think the look of the character kind of the nature that nico has in the game is a perfect substitute but i'm also just going to throw this out nico is my least favorite character in the entire game her abilities are really good but the character herself her person personality, her mindset is terrible. Cannot stand her in any way. She is the absolute worst. 
this would give Black Alice the opportunity to be a much better character than her. All while keeping the ability set the same, being very powerful in the actual game, which Nico is. And this also helps a lot of characters who aren't necessarily well known in Black Alice to now be known. For Venom, I decided to go with Blue Beetle, just because the Scarab in its own way does act like a form of a symbiote. I did also consider Clayface because the structure of Clayface does replicate what the symbiote can do, but I simply think Blue Beetle has much more of an affiliation considering that you could have Jaime Reyes as the Eddie Brock and the Scarab as the symbiote two personalities kind of fleshing into one. You could also play with the idea on being surrounded by so much magic. What happens to the Scarab when it gets corrupted by dark magic or evil magic from the villains? For Doctor Strange, I think this one was relatively simple. I went with Doctor Fate. Two literally supreme magic users. I do believe that in this game you would have Batman and Doctor Fate take on the forge role that Tony Stark and Doctor Strange takes in the game. So when you open up gamma ray coils, you're opening it up with Batman and his technology. And then when you're opening up artifacts to get new abilities, you're opening it up through Doctor Fate. They would be two characters who really do truthfully respect one another, but they play at completely different sides of the spectrum. But I also think it would be really interesting because what exactly would the Lords of of order have in store for Dr. Fate in the sense of how much would they actually let him contribute within the story because he is bound by that helmet. With Deadpool, I decided to go with Deathstroke because they are literally the analogs of one another and in personality wise, they are complete yin and yang, just complete opposites. I didn't think there was anyone in DC who could really capture what Deadpool is all about and Deathstroke is your closest thing to being a super soldier, highly intelligent, highly skilled, trained fighter, deadly assassin. And I do believe this is one of the attempts that you could make Deathstroke not always being an outright villain as we always see for him to be and maybe even people prefer him to be but you could use this archetype of Deathstroke the same way you did with the Injustice games where Deathstroke in that game he's not necessarily good but he's definitely not bad and he has joined for the greater good and that is what he would do in this particular situation. For Captain America I went with Super Superman. If you're going to have Iron Man and Captain America, probably the two biggest players in the Avengers and Marvel's Midnight Suns, I think you would need Batman and Superman here because you already have so many big heavy hitters. This is obviously going to mean that the threat they're up against is very big. It's even more powerful than who they currently have at the moment, or it's shaping up to be very powerful. With Superman being vulnerable to magic, I do think this opens the door to Superman not being the complete game changer that he always is. He is going to need help from the rest of these characters because being bogged down by so much magic, he's not going to be at 100% power capabilities at all times. Maybe he'll be 70%. I also did consider Commander Steel, which wouldn't be a bad option at all and would actually help the character become a little more popular as well. Next up is Morbius. And for this type of character, I decided to go with Man Bat. Now I know DC does actually have a vampire character in which we will get more into very, very soon. But the reason I went with Man Bat is because I thought it was close enough getting an intelligent scientist who turns himself into a blood sucking creature. And we do use usually see Man Bat as a character who is just enraged, has no control over himself, and flies around stalking the night, even possibly more terrifying than Batman. But perhaps there's a way you could play with the character and maybe actually give the Man Bat persona 
a personality. Maybe you could actually find a way to make that character have the capabilities of talking or even be able to realize that he is on a team with these other characters fighting evil. There would also be a lot of very interesting dynamics between Man Bat and Batman in the realization that he is not fully evil. He is just a man who is trapped inside of a giant bat creature. That's where we get into the vampire creature of DC. For Blade, I decided to go with Andrew Bennett. Blade is half vampire, and whereas Andrew Bennett is full vampire like Morbius, he is actually a vampire hunter. One of his biggest goals is to literally stop the Queen of Blood from turning the entire world into vampires. So I'd say he is pretty damn dedicated to the cause. And even the DLC storyline, which I have finished in Midnight Suns, is about Dracula turning everyone into a new breed of vampires. Which you could, in all honesty, somewhat keep that DLC storyline similar in the DC version. For Hulk, there isn't too many characters who are similar in DC, but I decided to go with Swamp Thing. They're both, at the very least, around the same size and same height, but yes, they could not be any more different in power set. However, this would 100% percent be a situation that Swamp Thing would want to involve himself in, considering what is going on in this story would mean very bad destructive things for the planet itself, and Swamp Thing would need to be there to make sure that doesn't happen. I also considered someone like Solomon Grundy if you wanted a bit more of a dumber brute, if you will. I don't think that would have been a bad option at all either. For Scarlet Witch, I decided to go with Zatanna. Zatanna would of course be a big part of this game, considering that the main base is at Shadowcrest. Zatanna is freakishly powerful, probably one of the most powerful characters on this list by far. I also had an idea that since the story is going to be filled with a lot of magic users and there's going to be a lot of dark or black magic flying around, Zatanna is a homo magi just like she is from her father and her mother. So she is literally connected to all magic in the known world. Magic, of course, takes a long time to master and to even simply understand it. There are going to be a lot of characters in this story who uses different types of magic and is more comfortable with it than others. Others. I had an idea maybe in this world that Zatara died from someone or something who used dark magic and simply did not respect it or didn't even understand how to use it. So this would play off of Zatanna's feelings towards it in the game, which there would be a huge presence of it, and how she would handle it when other people use it around her, or even if she has to use it herself. For Wolverine, I went with Lobo. Now, to be completely completely honest with you, I truthfully have no idea why Lobo would even be part of the story. I don't know exactly what it would be that would take him from wherever he is in the universe to come to Earth to help a Midnight Suns team, but I like the idea of all these different characters coming together, the team up that you not necessarily would ever see team up in the first place. So I had to go with him. For Storm, I decided to go with Black Lightning. That is probably the closest power set character DC would have to her. This misfit matchup of Magic users, Justice League members, and even Soul Riders, I don't think we would ever see a situation where Black Lightning would find himself a part of a team like this. But if the whole point is to have all these random characters join in together, why not bring him into the fold? I also considered Wonder Woman being the substitute for Storm. Maybe the Trinity is too much for this team. However, she's not a bad option considering a lot of her character has a magical background. She's had to deal with a lot of magical beings before. Captain Marvel, a galactic character and an Avengers related character. I decided to do somewhat of the same thing here and go with a Green Lantern. However, I'm not going with a Jon Stewart or a Hal Jordan. I'm not even going with Kyle Rayner or Guy Gardner, I decided to go with Jessica Cruz. Not only is this a great way of bringing a Green Lantern into the fold, but it is a great way of bringing in a Green Lantern that we don't always see or that the public knows to be the main Green Lanterns. And once again, with popularity, maybe this helps her become a little more popular. And then finally, for the main playable characters, Spider-Man, I decided to go with Flash, but the Wally West version. Now, it depends 
depends on what you would want to do. This could be a Justice League animated series version where the Wally West Flash is the main Flash, he is the adult, or you could bring in a Wally West Flash who's part of the Teen Titans, or who is maybe simply just a little bit younger. I do personally think that Wally West Flash has a little more personality similarities to Peter and Spider-Man than Barry does, but regardless, you could not go wrong with either Flashes. And now I'll quickly go through the characters who are not playable, but are still a big part of the story including the villains. So in Marvel's Midnight Suns, you have Sarah, Caretaker. And the character for DC that I wanted to go with is actually Madame Xanadu. I think Madame Xanadu could play the role of a very powerful and a very wise magician who is trying to bring in all of these characters together to take down one massive threat. She has a soft spot for some people, some others, not so much. She's very protective over others and the goal that they're trying to fight for, and she also has a lot of secrets. And since I've gone with Xanadu as caretaker, you might be able to figure out who the villain is, but if not, I'll get to that eventually. You also have the ghost or the spirit of Agatha Harkness, and I think a really cool character for that in this scenario would actually be Zatara, Zatanna's dad, and that would make sense because this is Shadowcrest, and probably his essence is lingering around this mansion. You you could even do something where just like Marvel's Midnight Suns, you have a situation where Agatha is training Scarlet Witch and because of an accident, it ended up killing her. Maybe a similar situation was going on here and it was dark magic that killed Zatara. But what Zatara's role as spirit would be is to help Hunter around Shadowcrest, get a gain of his bearings, understand what happened to him and how he died, what has gone on over the past 300 years and also unlock new magical abilities. Finally, for the villains, with Lilith, I decided to go with Morgan Le Fay, and with Cthon, I decided to go with Trigon. In Morgan Le Fay, you have an extremely powerful and very old sorceress who wants to express her magical dominance over the entire planet. And then for Trigon, you have a multiversal demon who has a hunger for domination all over the multiverse. With Trigon, that obviously brings Raven into the story a little bit more. And with Morgan Le Fay, she's the sister of Madame Xanadu, and you could even potentially play with the idea that Hunter is the son or the daughter of Morgan Le Fay as well, and they keep calling to him to try and get him to finally turn to the darkness. I have not beat Marvel's Midnight Suns yet, but however that game ends up, could somehow be similar to what Morgan and Trigon would do, or it could even potentially be far more deadlier. But there you go, guys, Marvel's Midnight Suns if it existed in DC. It would be a lot of fun with these characters, familiar, unfamiliar, characters who are in need of a popularity boost, and playing it in a strategic card game where you can slowly get to know each and every one of these characters. So let me know in the comments down below what you thought of my lists, and let me know what characters maybe you would substitute for others, or just let me know what your list would look like in general. Regardless, I hope you all enjoyed the video. I'm going to go back to playing Midnight Suns, and until next time, I will talk to you all very soon. I'm the Batman.